Okay, so back again. Um, so this is the um, first um, version of the duct. It's for a 40 mil uh, fan. Um, not too worried about the motor or the rotor at the moment. Um, just concentrating on the the fan size and the ducting size and scaling it. So um, early on, what you know with 3D printing, uh, if feasible and if light enough, I was hoping to print the shrouds and um, that's it basically. And the ducting, if I could get that um, light enough as well and strong enough. Um, so at the moment, um, the shrouds print no problems. Um, I've tested. This is the 40 mil version um, of the shroud. Um, and I've tested the one against the original, um, the original black shroud, um, and there's no um, difference in performance with this fan with this blade. So everything I've done hasn't hasn't been detrimental to the actual um, performance of the fan or the motor, um, apart from it actually being lighter. So it's actually worked out lighter. Um, the other thing I can do, I'm pretty sure I can do, I can lighten it further. Um, these little tabs are just for um, for the test rig, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later. Um, but yeah, so that's where I started. Um, in that duct, um, pretty in pink. Um, so, I mean, a lot of this is new to me. Um, I've only been 3D, 3D printing for about, probably about seven months now. Um, so a lot of this is very, very new to me. So a lot of it is just exploring the materials, finding what I can get away with, what I can't get away with, and just working through a whole lot of uh, problems, um, design problems, um, manufacturing problems, I suppose. Um, so my printer will only print, um, the maximum height I can print is uh, 150 millimeters. So obviously I'm going to have joints in, in any ducting I do, um, depending on the size. Um, so one of the things I need to do is find out how I was going to join these, these pieces together and um, ensure that the internal surface is um, nice and smooth and there's no um, lip um, on the inter internal surfaces. So um, a couple of ideas I've tried. This is the sort of second idea is where I actually make a flange. So I flange the uh, part. Um, it's all bent now and um, distorted now, but that's just from the treatment I, I did to the ducting after, after it had been finished, after it finished printing. But once it's printed, it, it comes up perfect, um, that flange. And the idea is to line the two flanges up and then bond them, um, chemically weld them, or chemically glue them rather, with um, suitable glue for ABS. So, um, so that's worked really well. And then the idea is just to use sand these off afterwards. So you're not, you're not carrying the weight, they're not staying, unless you wanted them to stay as part of the structure. But um, in this instance, they'll, they'll get sanded off. Now, this, this, the treatment I've used for, for all of the um, ducting uh, for the pink ducting was um, basically um, after printing and I'm printing as fine as I can get away with at the moment so my um, the wall thickness is at um, currently at about 0.35 millimeters and um, so it's very 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 light um, and then what I'd normally do what I did with this this piece is the, the inlet piece is I, I wet and dried it so I went through the grades on the inside and bother with the outside you can see the lines and stuff and then you can see them. Um, but on the inside um, I went through all the different grades um, so it is silky smooth. Um, so the, here I've got four parts really, you get one, two, three and four and then I, I glue it together um, to give us uh, what you see now. Um, so I went and dried through the grades to about, I don't know, uh, about a thousand, yeah about a thousand grit. Um, and then what I've been doing is, I mean, there's a couple of ways you can use the acetone to finish the parts. One's a um, sort of acetone bath, you know, like a steam bath, where you you vaporise the 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 acetone and then you suspend your part in there, and the um, the vapour basically smooths your part. Um, I did try that on, on some other stuff, and I had a, a lot of problem actually controlling it. And when you got really really thin walled parts, such as you got here. Um, you end up having areas where too much, too much of the acetone is getting on there, and you get holes, and it all goes gooey, and so that didn't work out so well um, for for thin wall parts. So what I've been doing um, is literally um, dunking the part in the acetone very quickly, so literally in and out, in and out, um, as a jar, yeah, my acetone. So literally open the jar, dunk it in and out, and that that's it. Yeah, don't you don't hang on to it, and then. 
get in front of a, a fan or a heater as soon as you can to, to, to evaporate as much of the acetone as you can. Um, I really like the process, um, mainly because what you end up doing is chemically welding any loose strands or any loose fibres of the plastic. So you end up with something, um, I'm not really sure, hopefully you can actually pick up on how smooth this is. Um, very, very strong, you know, that's like, that's, that's like plastic basically. Um, you know, it's very, very strong. Um, but the negative to that is um, it distorts, yeah. So it, um, no matter how hard you try, because it's so thin, um, you end up with it distorting uh, further than than you'd wish. Um, so basically, so I made the decision then, well, I'll have to go the hard route, and that would mean um, still sanding it, but just going down the grades and then possibly sanding um, and polishing the, the internals. Not a problem, just a little bit more time consuming. Um, once once I've made that decision, um, it was a lot easier. Um, so again, so we've got like a constant area ducting um, that I've designed. Um, the stuff, I mean, if you've got access to CAD and uh, 3D printing, I mean, the, the scope for for parts you can print it's just just amazing. And part of my problem is actually getting breaking with my traditional way of um, designing parts um, and things, um, and then but perhaps just opening up your ideas a little bit more to see how you can uh, make and design things and print things. So anyway, so you got like a constant area duct in here. Um, and it's on, on both the inlet and the, on, on the exhaust. Um, and these all, that's another idea I tried. And this actually works quite well, so I'll be reusing this idea where it's still single walled. Um, hope you can see that. But as it comes up, it just like a, it's like a, a juggle in the plastic. And um, it fits in really tight um, and snug. It's a bit loose now because of all the messing I've been doing with this one. But, um, when you get it right and get your settings all right, it is very, very tight, very, very smooth. And again, um, the transition through the through the ducting is very, very smooth. So all the wetted surfaces, um, the ducting, ducting us, are, you know, it's like glass. It really is very, very smooth. Um, so yeah, um, so that's where I started with the ducting, and um, I did a little test rig um, that you can see here. And I'll just zoom out a bit for you. So yeah, I, I sort of designed um, the test rig. I don't know if you can see over it. <laughs> um, so I can test it properly. Um, again, um, the 3D printing and CAD and whatnot, this stuff is brilliant. You can have so much fun with this stuff, um, knocking out um, jigs and stuff. So basically, um, all these slides, um, all sorts of adapters and parts I've, I've made up um, to jig things. And the idea is, you know, at the end I'd like to, whoop, just working the nose of the hunter. Get over that. At the end I can test the whole frame or just the ducting um, with the motor or just the motor on its own. Um, and basically they um, basically just locks in there, so you just pop it in there, um, tighten up whatever nuts and, and you're good to test. I um, haven't done any serious testing yet, just just more just making sure it works, make sure the idea works. Um, so hopefully later today or tomorrow I'll, I'll do some more um, serious testing. Um, so that's the um, the frame, uh, the test rig that, that's been made. And I was saying that I decided to drop down a size um, from 40mm to 28mm. Um, and that was based on the E-Flight MIG um, that I've been flying. Um, so much fun to fly, really great little model. Um, so the idea was, well, I can use, I can gut that plane, that frame, because it's a little bit dented and, <laughs> and I've seen, seen, seen better days. So I gutted that, I thought, I'll gut that, I can use the servos and kit out of that uh, for this project. Um, if I can, I can, if I can't, it's not, it's not a big deal, but it'd be quite nice if I could use those, those parts. Um, or most of those parts, or electronics in this project. So, there's your 40mm, oops, I'll try and get that in, the, in frame. There's the 40mm ducting. 
Um, and then when I dropped down to 28, uh, absolutely amazed by how much the scale changes. Just on, you know, so you're going from 8 mil, but, uh, 18, 12, uh, yeah, 18 mil, uh, 8 mil, 28, 12 mil. <laughs> <laughs> Mine went blank there for a sec. So yeah, so um, again, same main, mainly the same ideas. Um, this is the, the exhaust. Um, so we're going down to 80% uh, um, fan swept area on, on the exhaust. Um, I mean, this is, you know, as I'm going along, I'm learning more and more. Um, and this one is dunked in acetone as well. Um, it's probably the last one I'm going to dunk it in the acetone because it did distort everything. All the joints went sloppy, so I'll, I'll just live and, and just spend a little bit more time polishing the inside. It's not doesn't take you a hell of a lot, lot longer to do. Um, and the other thing is I can actually make custom um, sounding blocks, print custom sounding blocks to sound into internals of these. So it's not going to take take long at all to get a really really good finish on it. So um, yeah, so the same idea there. Um, changed. The way the fan couples to the, the inlet, um, I was, wasn't happy with the transition from the inlet into the shroud. I just wanted a little bit of a flat on there, um, just so you can line everything up perfectly. So um, I've come up with basically this, so that's your exhaust, um, and that's your your shroud, and basically remember these, these tags will be gone, and that fits in there like, and that's that's job done really. Um, and then for the inlet, um, I've got one here that's mocked up, okay, so that's, um, this is printed in three parts, again, change the sort of technique of printing, um, try and get this wall as thin as I can, it's, let's have a look at some of this, I think we've got the wall up now, 3.5, so we say 0.35 mil still, um, but these are super super light, very very lightweight. Um, I had some problems with this, but I'll go into that a little bit a little bit later. Um, so it's in three parts, um, three parts because I wanted to get this to print in the style, which is like a continuous print. Um, the 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 Z axis on the printer is continuing drops, so you get a very very smooth part. Uh, you don't get no start stops. Um, anyone who's done any welding, you know what start stops are and where you go to join um, your welds or your plastics. So it's a similar, similar idea, you end up with a horrible like zipper. You know, you can get the zipper right down, but you still end up with a zipper that you need to clean um, and file off. But if you do it this way, there's no start stops. It literally starts at the bottom and well starts at the top and then just lowers the build plate in a continuous um, Z movement. So, you know, until the end, and you end up with a great looking part. Very, very thin, very, very light. So, um, so what we've got here is, and then I've got a ring, a joining ring, um, and again, that just slips onto, onto there, so I'll do that onto the inlet. And then, so that's, the motor's gonna be in there, um, so I've got good access to the motor. Um, and then we just slide it all together, so it's a bit of a tight fit. Um, so, slide it on first, there we go, and then, so the, the two orange bits in the green ring will be will glued together permanently, um, I just haven't done it yet, um, and that's what we end up with um, for, for the inlet duct. So at the moment, for the, the complete ducting, just the idea of scale on the plane, it's slightly, slightly bigger, you know, the scale on the plane is slightly, slightly they're also slightly bigger. It's a nice scale actually, it fits nice, got loads of room. I possibly could drop it down smaller, drop the airframe down smaller, um, but I'll have to see how we are going with that. So um, just an idea of weight. So the weight of that duct in there. Uh, so that's the exhaust and the inlet and everything at the moment is. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oops. Try again. It's about 13 grams, I think. Um, I'll just have to put this on there for now. So I'll come back in a sec. You can see that. 
put the leaning tar piece back together again. Okay, so I think it's about 13 grams. Oops. Yeah, 13, 13.2 grams. So, um, like I said, you know, I'm very little experience in ducted fans, so I'm, I'm not sure how much something similar would weigh, weigh in conventional, with conventional sort of um, techniques. Um, another nice thing uh, with the 3D printer, I don't know if you can pick up on that, but you can add little registrations. Hopefully you can see that where holes and stuff need to be cut out. Um, that, that, that's something new I tried. Um, didn't think it would be possible on a single walled part. Um, but yeah, it, it came out great. Um, so that's obviously where the wiring and stuff's going to come up on the motor. Um, so yeah, that's the um, ducting. Current state of play for the ducting.